Hello, this is Steve with Pro Tools PC, and on this video I wanted to talk about Pro Tools shortcuts using the Windows key. So I thought I would do a video on some shortcuts that uh, don't seem to be utilized a lot, and I thought I would start by focusing on some that are centered around the Windows key. So I thought I would start by looking at how to send a track to two different locations without using a bus, because the normal procedure would be if we wanted to send, say, these two kick tracks to this aux track here, and then we also wanted to send them all the way over here to the drum aux 2 track, we could come over here and set up a bus to the drum aux 2 track. And then now with this setup, they would be going uh, the main output to the kick aux 1 and then over here to the drum comp 2. So the other way to do this if you don't need the buses is you can actually set up multiple outputs from the output here. And you do that by holding down the Windows key. So if you hold down the Windows key, hit your output drop down, we can go over to our buses, select drum comp 2. And now we see we got a plus sign here uh, symbolizing that there's, you know, this output here, kick aux 1 plus more. So if we hit the drop down, we can see we have an output there and we also have an output here. And then we could take that even a step farther if we wanted to and send it to a third place. And then now if we look at it, we actually have three outputs. So if I want to deselect some outputs here you have to hold the Windows key down to deselect the extra outputs as well. So what we can also do that falls in line with uh, many of the other Pro Tools shortcut functions as to set up these sends to multiple tracks but do it at the same time on say both of these tracks. So let's select the kick, hold down shift, we'll select the second kick. Now if we come over here and if we hold down Shift, Alt, and the Windows key all at the same time, hit our drop down, select Drum Comp 2, and it changed them both at the same time. And then same way if you want to uh, deselect, hold down Shift, Alt, and the Windows key, and then select the track, and they are both deselected. So now let's look at being able to move a clip vertically without changing the initial timeline placement of it. So if say I wanted to move this vocal track uh, here to this empty track or if I wanted to move it up here on top of this track, it'd be a bit risky to just grab it, move it up and hope that it lands in the exact same spot that you want it to. So what you can do is hold down the Windows key, grab your clip and you can see left and right timeline placement is locked but you can move the track vertically wherever you want to go. Now another cool shortcut that I find not many people know about is the ability to actually make a track jump to the cursor location on the timeline. So what I mean by that, here let me demonstrate it real quick, so let me just throw my cursor right there and let's grab this track and you can see the start of the track lined up with where exactly I set the cursor. So let's do that again. I'll set the cursor down. I'll grab the track. And the track jumps to the cursor. So now if I grab the Windows key and add control to it, now you'll see that the end of the clip here will line up with the timeline. So uh, to break this down a little bit, let's put our track back. You can set the cursor down wherever you like, any track you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be on the same track that the clip is on that you're moving to. So we can set it wherever we want. So this is really useful, especially in drum editing or if we need to, say, duplicate uh, multiple parts of a song to another location on the timeline. So if, say, I was editing drums, you know, and I wanted to line up a couple tracks, I could tab to transient to say the downbeat will just act like, you know, that's the downbeat of a kick track. And then if say this was the tom track, we could hit F8 to go to our grabber tool and just hold the Windows key, click it, and now they are lined up on the timeline together. If I wanted to make the end of the clip here line up with the cursor, I would hold Control and the Windows key. 
So related to this, the next feature would be to duplicate uh, whatever clips you want. So in this case, I'll say these vocal lines to um, copy them over to another specific point in the timeline. I guess the safest way would be is if we know where we want the downbeat to be, we know where the downbeat starts in the vocal line. So say the downbeat was to start there. We can cut all of these regions out so we know we're moving everything to the same point. And then what we could do is we have our cursor, so here let's tab to transient, we'll have our cursor set where we want it, switch to our grabber tool, and in this case we are going to hold Alt and the Windows key together and click on the clip. And right there we was able to copy all of the clips over to where we want. And then if say we wanted to bring the vocal lines back out to get the start of the first syllable, we can stretch those back out to where we want them. And we are good to go. So another feature is the ability to duplicate clips but backwards instead of forwards. So if you wanted to go forward, you would select the length of time you want the clip to be duplicated and then you would just hit Control D and the clip is duplicated forward. So now to duplicate it backwards, you just select the clip you want, you can go to the grabber tool, and if you hold down the Windows key, Control and Alt, so all three keys simultaneously, click on the clip, and it's duplicated backwards. And you see the end of the clip lines up with the start of the clip, so it's essentially just doing the exact same thing as we is doing duplicating forward, it's just doing it backwards. So control, window, key, and alt. So the second part of this function is instead of duplicating a track backwards with control, windows, key, and alt like we just did, we could actually just move this track backwards by the same parameters. So the end of the track would actually now be the beginning of the track. So if we wanted to do that, instead of hitting control, windows, key, and alt, we just hit control and the windows key and click on the clip. And so now the clip just moved back instead of being duplicated. So the last one I wanted to look at real quick is here with Avid's EQ3 plugin. And what this gives us the ability to do is isolate frequency bands. So let's turn on a couple frequencies just so I can kind of give an example real quick. And so now the only way to really say isolate this frequency, what's going on here would be to mute or should I say turn off these other channels? Well, that's not a real effective way to A, B something back and forth. But now what you can do is hold down Shift and the Windows key. Let's click on the Q of the frequency. And the minute you go uh, to pull it up and down, left and right, move it, it shifts into the solo mode. And then you can isolate how much of the frequency you want to listen to. And we, if we want to, we could also change the frequency up here. But the catch is we can't change the band here. So what we have to do is to change our frequency and the cue up here if you want to work with both of them. So now if we just listen to an example of that real quick. So what it lets you do is solo that frequency band and it just kind of takes all of the other frequency bands and how they're set out of the equation so you can sweep around and look for a problem frequency, a noise, anything like that you might be looking for. It's one of the best ways in really any EQ plugins that I know of to sweep through and look for problem frequencies that quick and easy. So instead of soloing this, doing that to different bands, you can just hold down shift in the Windows key and then it instantly goes into a solo mode for a given frequency.
So thank you for watching the video. I hope you was able to learn at least a little bit from it and feel free with any questions or comments. Mm -hmm.